everyone, it's Jared from One Earth Mushrooms. I am really enjoying learning everything about mushrooms, and one thing I thought was really exciting is the life cycle of a mushroom. So I wanted to do a quick art illustration of how mushrooms grow in the wild, and really the life cycle behind all that. And actually, um, Brett Control Freak, who's a subscriber here on the channel, he recommended that I do a video on this, so I really appreciate the idea. and. For everyone else out there, if you got ideas of something you want to see, just let me know and I'd be pretty excited to do it. So we're going to start with a fully developed mushroom that is ready to drop its spores. And we're going to do the whole life cycle so we'll get back around to how the mushroom got fully developed by the end. So this mushroom's already uh, broke away from its veil and spores are releasing from the gills. Um, and this is kind of the last step and also the first step in the life cycle of a mushroom. So one mushroom has billions of spores, somewhere around 15 billion spores in the gills that get released into the wind as a form of sexual reproduction. Those spores blow wherever the wind takes them and land wherever they land. Um, and that takes us to the second step, inoculation. So obviously of those 15 billion spores, some are not going to survive, quite a few are not going to survive, most are not going to survive, but also um, quite a few do, and if they land on a piece of ground that's suitable for their environment, if it has the right moisture, or even if it's not the perfect moisture, but it is something that will support life, um, the spore will just sit there until it gets to the third stage of germination. And this is really the start of mycelium. When the spore gets into the ground, one of two things can happen. First is, the spore could go dormant. Um, basically, the spore just reduces its metabolism by about 15%. It kind of dries up and has a dry shell around the outside of it. Um, and it awaits favorable conditions. So, it could be a change in temperature or a change in moisture, maybe it rains. Um, a chemical change or a big change like a fire. Every mushroom is going to be different as far as what it wants to come out of that dormant state. Um, so the second thing that could happen, and this is also what would happen after dormancy for a spore, is the spore would get ready to go into its growth cycle right away, uh, which is basically where it absorbs water and it swells up to about four times its size and it dramatically increases its protein, DNA, and RNA production. And this causes germ tubes to extend away from the spore. Uh, which takes us into the fourth step, which is mycelium expansion and growth. So we're going to see some rapid lengthening and branching of the hyphae, or the mycelium. And we'll just call it mycelium from here on out because it's something that we all understand or is a commonly used word. Um, so as the mycelium branches out, it's going to start secreting enzymes into the soil or into the substrate around it. Those enzymes break down the complex molecules in the soil into something that's more easily absorbable through the cell walls of the mycelium. And obviously those nutrients are going to facilitate further growth. And at the same time, the cell walls are also absorbing water to support all of these functions. And you'll see here that some of these mycelium are growing into each other um, and that is a form of sexual reproduction so if two comparable mycelium or if two comparable spores in their mycelium happen to be close enough to each other they will join together to sexually reproduce and this is something that mushrooms do to respond to generally unfavorable conditions so if they need to adjust how they're growing, they will produce sexually. And if there is pretty favorable conditions and the mushroom doesn't feel like it needs to uh, evolve, it will reproduce asexually, which is essentially producing a genetic copy of itself and growing another mushroom. So as the mycelium grows and expands, eventually it's going to have enough mass and there's going to be enough um, mycelium in the soil to create uh, the fifth step, which is hyphal knot formation, and I combined hyphal knot and primordial formation together because they're very similar, um, at least for our purposes, they're similar enough that we can call them essentially the same thing. 
So this is when the mycelial network condenses uh, and it begins to assemble the parts of the fruiting body. It releases different enzymes into the soil to optimize the environment for growth of the fruiting body. And this is really where the mycelium starts to become visible above the surface of our substrate. And it brings us into the sixth step, which is fruit body selection. Um, and we always call this pinning. And it's kind of just the, um, the time where we see visible parts of the mushroom out of the substrate. This is where the most uh, viable primordia are selected by the organism to develop a fruiting body. And at this point, most of the cells for the fruiting body are already present. Uh, after fruit body selection, there's going to be very little cell division. And most of the growth is just going to be from cell swelling as nutrients and water are pumped into the cells from the mycelium up into that pin. And once the organism decides that it has enough uh, nutrients and moisture or water in it to support growing the fruiting body, it's going to move into the seventh step, which is pretty seamless from six to seven, uh, and that's fruiting body growth. During this step, the organism's mycelial network channels water and nutrients into the pin, and rapid growth of the cells expand the visible cup, stipe, cap, and veil of the mushroom. Inside the cap, gills are going to form and spores will appear on the surface of the gills when the fruiting body is ready to drop spores. Then the veil will tear away from the stipe in the cap, the cap is going to continue expanding, and the spores will then be released into the outside environment. At this point, the fruiting body has served its purpose, and it dies off. And that took us right back to step one. We released our spores, the spores will inoculate our substrate, which will germinate, form mycelium, eiffel knots, and primordia, fruiting bodies and shoot out some more spores and keep that cycle going. Hey, thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate the feedback that I've been getting on this channel. You guys have been awesome and stay tuned for more because I, if you haven't figured it out yet, I am super stoked about mushrooms and everything I'm learning, all the experiments I'm doing, I'm having a blast and I'm loving the interaction that I have with you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm going to release videos every three days and I well, I can't promise, but I'm going to try to stick to that as much as I can. Um, and if you like this video, just give it a thumbs up. And that's going to help, uh, help me know what I should make more videos on. Alright guys, I'll see you around next time. Thanks.